Did you know that although your brain is just 2% of your overall body weight, roughly speaking, that it requires 10 times the amount of energy of your other organs. To be honest, it's easy to feel like a lack of mental energy is some kind of moral failing. We tell ourselves things like, why can't I power through? What's wrong with me? Why don't I have the energy? But here's the thing, our brains need energy just like our bodies do. You would not expect your body to run a marathon and then feel guilty for feeling tired afterwards, so why would we treat mental fatigue any differently? Hi, I'm Naomi from the Todoist team and whilst I can't tell you that you'll never experience mental fatigue again, I can tell you that by watching this video, you should hopefully experience it less often and feel a little bit more comfortable with what to do when you do experience it. So what exactly is mental fatigue? Well, it's that feeling that I think we've all experienced where your brain just doesn't want to work properly. It's often described as brain fog. Concentration becomes elusive, simple tasks can drag on forever, and you can find yourself rereading the same paragraph or tweaking the same line of code again and again. Your patience also wears thin, so things that can seem like minor annoyances in the morning can, as mental fatigue sets in, become major irritants. Mental fatigue can either be acute or it can be chronic. Now, acute fatigue is often short-lived and relieved by rest. It's the kind of thing that you would experience during a mid-afternoon slump or at the end of a hard day. However, if left unaddressed, acute fatigue can actually morph into chronic fatigue, which is the long road to burnout, and that is the one that we all want to avoid. So what causes mental fatigue? Well, it's often complicated and has lots of different contributing factors, some of which are physical, some of which are cognitive, and sometimes it's a combination of both. A lot of the physical factors are things that we already know and understand, so things like lack of sleep or poor diet can contribute to mental fatigue. And when it comes to the cognitive side of things, it's often that you're asking your brain to do too much. Cognitive overload can actually come from focusing too intensely for too long on a single task or spreading yourself too thin. And although our urge is often to procrastinate when that happens, it can actually add to the tax on your brain too. You may have seen memes like, my brain has too many tabs open, which I think we gravitate towards because it's actually quite close to the truth. When your brain's juggling WhatsApp messages, work emails, chores that need to be done, other tasks on your to-do list, visual reminders that you have around you, and even basic things like what to eat every day and general hygiene. Each task added to that list of things that your mind has open at any one time is gonna speed up cognitive fatigue. And it sounds familiar because that's how most of us operate on a daily basis. Now, fortunately, there are ways to manage both the physical and the cognitive aspects of mental fatigue. Now, the list of things I'm gonna give you, some of which are gonna be expected and some of which might be a little bit unexpected, but the things that are expected, I want you to really take stock of whether or not you're doing them. Because it's very easy to see things like hydration and roll your eyes and say, well, of course she's gonna say that. But are you actually hydrated? Take stock, take note, and take action. Now let's start with the physical side. Number one is high quality fuel. Nutrition is not just for athletes. As we said at the beginning of this video, your brain uses 10 times more energy than any of the other organs in your body. So it needs to be adequately fueled. Now, diet advice these days can be a little bit complicated and you'll probably have your own flavor, but the general advice is that you should have a diet that's rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and healthy fats. And those are the types of things that are going to fuel your brain. Number two, and I apologize in advance for anyone who is a parent of a young child or suffers with insomnia. As someone who has had both of those things going on in their lives at different times and the same time, I can very much empathize with not wanting to hear this advice, but sleep. Sleep is so, so important. It is crucial, if you can get it, for how your mind is going to function each day. Now, the advice is that we should aim to get anywhere between seven and nine hours of sleep at night. That is always best reverse engineered, where you pick your wake up time in the morning and then you decide, based on that, what time you're gonna to go to bed at and you stick to it. Number three is hydration. Even mild dehydration can have a severe impact on how your brain functions, including your cognitive ability and your ability to concentrate. So it is maybe worthwhile having a think about substituting one of those coffees for a tall glass of water a day and increasing it as much as you can. And number four won't come as a surprise to you, it is exercise. Countless, hundreds, probably even thousands of studies at this stage 
have proven that exercise has positive impacts on your mental health. It's got positive impacts on your ability to concentrate and just your cognitive function in general. There's no debate here. It just helps. Now, if you're wondering how to get started with any of those things that I listed, maybe you're falling behind in one of those areas and you need a bit of help just breaking it down into actionable steps, we actually have to do as templates for quite a lot of them. So I will leave the links for those templates in the description box below and they'll give you all the information that you need. Now, before we tackle cognitive overload, allow me to hydrate. Now let's tackle the mental side of the equation, the cognitive overload that we've been talking about. Number one is to prioritize your tasks. Please, please, for the love of all things good, get the tasks out of your head and into some kind of system. It can be paper. Paper and pen is great. Todoist that we use and love is even better. If you can just get your tasks out of your mind and into a place that you can trust, where you can objectively look at them, I can't tell you how much of an impact this is going to make to how your brain is functioning because it's not having to keep all those tabs open for you anymore. I personally use the quick add widget on my iPhone, which I would show you, but I'm filming on that phone right now. So right before this video, I had a task pop into my mind. I needed to get travel insurance for an upcoming trip. And instead of letting it chew away at me whilst I was recording, I figured right straight into Todoist and now I don't need to think about it because I have a reminder set that later on this evening, I'm going to tackle that travel insurance task. Number two is time blocking. I am a enormous fan of this. Actually, only recently though. So I've always on and off over the years meddled with time blocking, but never really stuck to it until we released the calendar layout within Todoist. Now it is just a breeze. Everything I could possibly need to do in a day gets dragged into its own time slot. And now my tasks match up with my time. And it is wonderful for managing the cognitive load because I can not just schedule my tasks, but I can also schedule my breaks. Number three, set boundaries. Learn to say no. I know this is one that you see repeated everywhere and everybody's like, yeah, yeah, okay, I get it. But actually the next time somebody says to you, can you help me with this? Would you like to come to that? I need you to source this for me. You might want to consider just taking a beat because Actually, the pause is what's going to help you decide, do I really want to do this thing or not? Is it just going to add too much to my plate? Number four, mindfulness and meditation. Now, if you're not into traditional meditation, then that's totally cool. I get it. If you love it, go for it. Go for your life. As much meditation as you want. We know it's good for you, right? However, I know that a lot of people struggle to sink into that meditative place. When it comes to mindfulness and meditation for me personally, I just try and build just breaks, just little moments where I just take a few minutes, close my eyes, a few deep breaths. That's all it takes. Just do that regularly throughout your day. Bring yourself back to your center. I think the reflex that we have currently is that whenever we have a moment where our brain wants to take a break, you pull out your phone and you go straight onto your phone. But actually, if you can resist that urge just in that moment for a few seconds, a couple of minutes, if you can take a break, take a breath, then it's going to help you tremendously, I promise. And speaking of taking breaks, please take breaks. Please take breaks. People don't take breaks, but please, please do it because your brain will thank you, your body will thank you, your life outside of work will thank you. Techniques like the Pomodoro technique where you work for 25 minutes and then take a five minute break. Five minute break might sound really inconsequential, but actually it can have a massive impact. We have got a video on this, which I will link in the cards above. And then number six is to limit multitasking. I know that whenever you're frantically working your way through a list, it can feel productive trying to do four things at the same time, but it's completely not most of the time. Most of the time you're being incredibly inefficient and you're just draining your mental battery. So if you can, and I know some people's workplaces don't really allow for this, but if it's possible, single task as much as you can. This does bring me back to the calendar layout in Todoist or just time blocking wherever you do it. If you're able to time block, it does help significantly with single tasking because you do tend to just schedule one task at a time for a specific period of time. And I think you'll find that you'll not only be more productive, but also more calm if you work this way. Now, this video is simply scratching the surface of all of the amazing 
techniques and methods that we have to help you with mental fatigue, but you will find the rest of those in the article that this video was based on, which I will link in the description box below. You might see it fancily scrolling on the screen here somewhere. Just know that mental fatigue is something that we all struggle with at some point. Right now, I'm struggling with it myself. As I record this video, I'm, I'm coming up to a vacation with my family that I very desperately need and the mental fatigue does feel quite real. So just know you're not alone and there are ways for you to help yourself listed in this video, but also in that article. So I would encourage you to go and check it out. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. It helps algorithm whenever you do. And if you have any other tactics that help with mental fatigue, also leave those in the comments down below. We read every single one of them. And maybe even consider subscribing because it means so much to our entire team when you do. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Sounds very zen. Oh God, helicopter. The mic's definitely picking that up. You may have seen bra brains. You may have seen brains. I really hope you haven't seen brains. Paragraphs of books, I get the... What's that paragraphed? Per sloop? Per sloop. Never the...